All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Back for another quick hit. First and foremost, as always, before I get started, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. All right, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone who are teaching who real well. Peace, blessings, and safety. To all you sincere Akim, keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless whether people are here or whether they forbear. All right, and um, this uh, this lesson is going to be entitled, What is a Reprobate? Okay, because uh, a lot of people don't know what a reprobate is, all right, and what that really means, and don't understand the concept of a reprobate, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, dive right into that topic, all right? Just some uh, spiritual milk, because... When you're coming out of out of the religions of the world, all right, then you will learn that not all men are created equal. All right. You had certain men that were designed to be vessels of wrath, all right, particularly Esau Edom. All right. And then you have uh, men that were designed to be vessels of mercy. All right. Which is the elect of the nation of Israel. OK. Um, and then, of course, you have, you know pretty much that word reprobate, it goes into rejected, all right? And you're gonna know them, who they are through their works or lack thereof. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, and jump right into it. So without further ado, I'm gonna start here at the book of 2 Timothy chapter three, and I've got it pulled up in the Blue Letter Bible. All right, and I'm gonna start at verse one. So it's entitled, Difficult Times Will Come. Okay, reading verse one, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, all right, dangerous, sketchy, all right, uncertain. It says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the Most High, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. All right, and that, that specific verse, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Who, who falls under this umbrella? All right, uh, Christians, Catholics, two-third Israelites, Yah Israelites, all right, the, the the Israelites calling on Yahuwah, Yahusha. Okay, they they have a form of godliness. All right, but they're denying the power thereof. They're not actively doing the works of the Lord. They're not rehearsing the righteous acts. All right, you don't see any any prophets coming from any of these uh, these different groups that are under that umbrella that I just named. All right, these are once again what's called reprobates. All right, which we're gonna go into the definition of that. All right, verse six it says. For this, for of this sort are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women, and it's like and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. All right. So you notice that a lot of that these groups attract a lot of women because they're gonna pre they're gonna tickle their ear. They're gonna um, preach false doctrine that is that is soft and cuddly and sweet, and is appealing to the masses. All right. And women are going to be the ones that mainly fall victim to these traps, and men as well. All right, but you notice these false groups, they have a lot of women in them. All right. It says, verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's the reason why, even though they hate the camps, all right, they hate us, all right, which they don't know they're really hating the one who sent us, who is Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. That's why they, they refuse to call on his name. All right, but they're, they're forever learning. All right, but never coming to the knowledge of truth because there's no truth in the in the Israelites of Yah or Yahusha. There's no truth in Christianity and Catholicism. That's why they have to come to our channel, and they and they want to they they're coming to be fed, but then they don't they don't like what they're hearing. So then that's why they go on the comment board, they mock and they scoff. All right, okay, verse eight it says now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so did these also resist the truth. All right. That's exactly what they do. They once again, they come, they mock, they scoff. All right. Well, if you had the answers, then why are you coming to us? 
Why are you coming to watch our videos? And I'm not saying that to be uh, prideful or arrogant. And when I say us, I'm speaking of those that are preaching from the uh, from uh, the, the you know the doctrine of the Bible, the 100% truth, which is really being pushed out by great millstone head apostles slash elder bishops. All right, men on down in the affiliate camps. All right. Um, so, anyways, continuing on. All right, I'm gonna read that again. Second Timothy three and eight. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Okay, men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. All right, so let's get the definition of reprobate. All right, here we are in the Textus Receptus. We see the Greek words. I'm going to go down to um, that word reprobate, and it's Strong's G96. We'll get the pronunciation of it. Strong's G96, adakimas, adakimas. All right, so that word reprobate is adakimas, okay? All right, let's see what it means. Strong's info, it says, it says, um, unapproved, rejected, by implication, worthless, literally worthless, or morally worthless, cast away, rejected. All right, so they're rejected of, of Yahweh Bashman Yahweh Shai. They're castaways. They're reprobates. All right, they're, they're worthless to the Lord. They're not, that's why they have no works. They're not doing anything for the kingdom. All right, once again, they're not out there on the highways and byways. The same camps that they hate are the same ones that woke up the majority of the nation of Israel. Or if you were woken up by someone who's not out there on the highways and byways, guess who they learn from? All right, uh, it says, outline of biblical usage. It says, not standing the test not approved all right it says uh that uh, uh, uh definition two all right biblical uh, outline of biblical usage two says that which does not prove itself such as it ought right so proving yourself how do you do that you do it through your works all right and one of the main things that the lord tells us to do he commands us to go out there in the highways and byways and preach his blessed word all right proverbs chapter one it says wisdom crieth out in the, in the streets, she uttered her voice in the gates of the city. All right, there's not a literal person named Wisdom out there, you know, crying out. It's talking about the men, all right, that the Lord set up, the prophets, all right. So those who are reprobate, that which does not prove itself such as it ought, unfit for, unproved, spurious. Ooh, that's a good one right there. Let's get the definition of spurious. All right, it says not being what it purports to be. False or fake, adjective, bogus, all right? So they're spurious, okay? They're spurious believers, all right? And, and how do you know that? Because once again, they, they're not living up to the standard that Yahweh Basham Shai set for the elect, all right? And also, when you start going to the scriptures, the harsher parts of the scriptures, particularly Christians, all right, they start getting the emotions, they get in the I thought everybody can be saved, right? They, they, they actively fight against what the prophecy say this that's the old testament all right so they they appear all right they appear to be believers but then when it comes to the harsher parts of the bible all right they close you know they don't want to hear that right so they're spurious all right they're false fake or bogus all right and why is this okay once again because as we read earlier in the definition all right they are castaways rejected so they're rejected of yahweh by hashem yahweh shai all right once again, that's a, a false doctrine, all right, of Christianity and replacement theology in particular that everyone on the face of the earth can make, can make it, Salaki, all right, is going to inherit the kingdom. Only the elect, all right, which the elect are all Israelites are going to inherit the kingdom. But even the two thirds, all right, they're in that, they're in that um, category of reprobates as well. So Isaiah chapter six, all right, in verse uh, eight. Okay, actually, you know what? Yeah, Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 7. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see you indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. 
All right. So the Lord has blinded these people purposefully. All right. Then said I, Lord, how long? How long are these are these people going to be blinded? All right. Which this is particularly talking about the, the, the two thirds of the Israelites. All right. Because the other nations there, it's never it was never for them anyways. But it says how long? And he answered, unto the cities be wasted without inhabitant. And the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. All right, so they're going to be destroyed. All right, they're going to be destroyed with Esau and the rest of the heathen nations. All right, and then, then after they're going to know the Lord after death by pain, as it says in uh, Second Ezra. Let's go ahead and get that right quick. I believe it's Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. All right, here it is. All right, Second Ezra chapter nine and verse uh, nine. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law, all right, and the word loathe means to hate, all right, and who's that fit? Christians, that's the Christians and Catholics, that's why they're always saying the law is done away with, because they hate the law of the Heavenly Father. And they that have loathed my law, while they yet had liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, Understood not, but despised it. Now, you know, the Lord came so we could eat pork, we could, we could eat shrimp, crab, lobster. We ain't got that. That's the Old Testament. We ain't got to follow that. Okay. All right. Verse 12. The same must know it after death by pain. All right. So that's what they're, that's what's going to be. All right. And at the end of the day, it's all through the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh He's the one that has blinded them. All right. Let's get this. Matthew chapter uh, 13. All right. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Actually, I start at 9. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be shall be taken away even that that he hath. Therefore do I speak to them in parables, because they, seeing not and hearing, they hear not, and neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of es Esaias, which is Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have the, they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed be your blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. All right, it says for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Okay, so there you go. All right, so pretty much the Lord is the one that has blinded. All right, he has blinded the um, he has blinded the uh, the minds of the ones that are rejected of Him. All right, you know He's the one that like I said, like like we just read in Isaiah chapter six. All right, this is a uh, this is a um, just a pretty much a recollection of it in the book of Matthew. All right, and why did the Lord do this? Because He doesn't want to deliver them. All right, they're just not of the elect. It's already it's already prophesied. All right, that certain people. Will be blinded. All right. It says, uh, "It for Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for." I right, matter of fact, let's get that right quick before I go here. All right. The Lord is the one that did it. Okay. Romans eleven and seven. It says, "What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for." All right. So the majority of the Israelites, what are they seeking for? The truth. But the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So the Lord is the one that did that. Why? Because End of the day, he wants to destroy them. All right, Mark chapter 4, all right, and verse 11. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of Yahweh, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. All right, and, and you know, we don't know if we're of the elect, you know, Lord's will, we are, and we, we, uh, we labor to enter into that rest as it tells you to do in, uh, Hebrews chapter four, you know, but, 
people who are who are blinded, you can literally see it. When you when you start going into the prophecies, their mind just shuts down. All right, the Lord will not allow them to understand. All right. Okay. All right. But um anyways, so once again the Lord is the one that's doing this. All right. And how are you gonna see that? All right, through their works. Okay. This is Titus chapter one and verse fifteen. It says, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know the most high, but in works they deny him. You see? So this is how you how you how you uh, uh identify reprobate. All right, they profess that they know the most high, but in works they deny him. Being abominable, all right, what makes you abominable? Let's go ahead and get that right quick. All right. Well, first let's get the definition abominable. Oh, you know what? Nope. Let's, let's go here. Let's get the definition of abominable. All right. So they make them, it says, they profess that they know the most high, but in works they deny him being abominable. All right, let's, let's get the definition on that. All right, Strong's G947. Strong. All right, Salakia, Salakia, phone calls. It's always like that. As soon as you get a lesson in, somebody want to call. But going back, all right, so this word we were getting, all right, this is the word abominable. All right, Strong's G947. All right, let's get the pronunciation. Strong's G947. Badeluktas. Badeluktas. All right, it says detestable idolatrous all right it says abominable or detestable now let me see i'm gonna go to this right here oh uh, hang on um hang on salakia let me go here all right so what makes you abominable all right in the eyes of the lord here it is boom leviticus chapter 7 and verse 21 it says, moreover, the soul that shall touch any unclean thing as the uncleanness of a man or any unclean beast or any abominable unclean thing and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which pertain unto the Lord, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. So it says that if you even touch something that's abominable or, or, or unclean beast, all right, that you are that you are making your soul abominable. OK, so the reason I brought that out <clears throat> is because Christians tell you that you can do whatever you want. You can eat whatever you want. All right. But once again, why do they say that? All right. Because they are reprobates. They rejected of the most high. Titus 1 and 16. They profess that they know the most high, but in works, they deny him being an abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. All right. And at the end of the day, that's just a lot. All right. Not only are they active, do they actually fight against the Lord's commandments? All right. But they're not out there on the highways and byways as the Lord told us to do. All right. They're, they're reprobate to every good work. Let's get this right quick. Let's go to the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 25. All right. I'm going to get the parable of the talents. All right. So this is um, Matthew, chapter 25. And let's see. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered them unto them his goods. And unto one he gave, he gave five talents to another two and to another one to every man according to his several abilities and straightway took his journey. All right. And these talents all right, pretty much represent the knowledge, wisdom, understanding the Lord blesses you with. OK, and it's 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 using in, in, in the old times that word talent meant money. All right. But pretty much what he's saying is I'm giving you I'm giving you money or spiritual blessings and I want you to multiply it. And we're going to we're going to see that as I as I keep reading further down. It says, then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So so he doubled he doubled what the Lord had blessed him with. Right. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained another two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. 
after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So the, the master came back and said, hey, man, what's going on? And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, thou deliverest unto me five. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. So he said, I double what you gave me. All right, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man. I reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. So what he's saying is, he's saying, you wicked, I gave you. I gave you this this money and I wanted you to go and, and multiply it for me. But you lazy. All right, you didn't you just sat on it. You ain't do nothing with it. All right. He says, take, therefore, the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And what is that going to be? All right. Uh, uh, some, uh, symbolically. It says weeping and gnashing of teeth, but the, in, in this in this time it's going to be the lake of fire, all right. So the, so that's the reason why a lot of you can't grow in the truth either because you're not doing nothing with it, all right. The Lord says He reveals His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. So what does a prophet do? He goes out and prophesies, all right. He tells you what's going to happen before it even happens. Why is the Lord going to give you spiritual gifts and blessings and you ain't going to do nothing with it? You just going to sit. You just going to sit on on your ass on the couch, and or in, in front of the computer. Not doing nothing with, with what the Lord gave you. And once again, you're rep that so once again, reprobate unto every good work. You see, the Lord, the Lord, He wants He wants messengers and soldiers and men that are gonna go out there and do the work. All right. And once again, the only the only ones you really see doing that are the true prophets of the Lord. Okay? The prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Once again, you don't see no prophets of Jesus, you don't see no prophets of Yeshua, all right, no prophets of Yah, all right. Why? Because that's one, one, that's not the true names of the Lord. All right. But two, because only the prophets are going to have the secrets. That's why, once again, even though you guys hate us, you come to our videos because you know that this is that with the with the true biblical Israelites. This is the only place where you're going to get fed spiritually. All right. Where you're going to gain understanding. But once again, the Lord has rejected you. So it really don't even matter. All right. While everyone was. Let me, let's get this right quick. Um. Let's go back up to the first part of that chapter. All right, because while everybody else is out there doing the work, all right, what are you doing? What are you doing for the kingdom? All right, this is Matthew 25 and 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. All right, who are the virgins? All right, those virgins, the bride is the elect. All right. Or those who desire to be of the elect. All right, the hopeful elect. Those are the virgins, and the bridegroom is Yahweh Shai, who they ignorantly called Jesus. All right, it says, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. All right, so the oil represents pretty much being ready, all right, being prepared for the, for the marriage. See, that's what the oil represents. And how do you do that? How do you prepare yourself? By doing the good works, rehearsing the righteous acts. All right. It says, let's, con let's continue on. It says, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. 
All right, so pretty much what this is representing, what this is representing is when this, when the Savior comes back to bring destruction upon America, all right, to put our enemies into captivity and to, to deliver the elect, all right, from the hands of the wicked. When all this happens, all right, those that are the wise, they're already prepared. They've been, they've been doing what, what the Lord requires of them. So they got the oil in their lamps, all right, but then the reprobates, all right, when, every, when everything starts to hit the fan, then they're going to be trying to do what they're going to, I don't want to get out there on the highways and byways now. Now, I'm going to call on the right names now. It's too late. All right. It says, after word came also the virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh. OK, so when, when, when they when, when that time comes and they want to be brought into the marriage chambers, all right, which is it's symbolically, it represents the chariots, all right, the vehicles of deliverance that's going to deliver from the nuclear fire, that's going to deliver from, from uh, Jacob's trouble and all the evils, all right, that the sword, famine, death, destruction, all right, when all that stuff starts to come, those who are not using their time right now to prepare, then they're going to want to be saved. It's going to be too late by then. You should have, you should have made sure that you had oil in your lamp. While the, while, while the store, you know, before the Lord came. But once again, that's the reason why they're not doing that is because they're reprobates. All right, let's get this. First John chapter two. All right. Actually, matter of fact, I'm gonna go back to that definition of what a reprobate is. All right. <clears throat> let's see. All right. The word reprobate. All right. Adokimos in the Greek. All right, it says a castaway, rejected or a reprobate. All right, not standing the test, not approved. All right, that which does not prove itself such as it ought. All right, let's get this. First John chapter 2. Okay, first John chapter 2, and I'm going to get verse 15. All right, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth, he that does the will of Yahweh, abideth forever. All right. So everything in this society about to be, all this shit about to be burnt up, man. All right. No, nothing that you see is going to make it except for the elect. And what are the elect going to be doing? They're going to be keeping that oil in their lamps. All right. They're going to be doing the will of the Lord. All right. Which is once rehearsing the righteous acts. All right. Rehearsing the righteous acts, following the law, such the commandments to the best of your ability. And then, of course, you know, for the men being out there on the highways and byways. All right. Preaching the word for the women, serving your, your husband as your Lord. All right. These are the works as the daughters of Sarah. This, these are the works that this is how you keep your oil in your lamp. All right. Let's, I'm gonna get a few more scriptures and I'm gonna wrap it up. Let's get Second Peter, chapter one, and verse ten. All right, it says, "Wherefore, so for this reason, the rather, brethren, all right, you hopeful elects out there, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. All right, give diligence. What does diligence mean? All right, diligence. It means." Careful and persistent work or effort. So this is a work. You have to continue in the works of, of your Howell Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. You got to keep that oil in your lamps. All right. Careful and persistent work or effort. You got to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Once again, what, uh, um, one of the elders put out a video. He said, why do you think the Lord is going to save you? You go up against the prophets. You don't do. You, you ain't out there on the highways and byways preaching yourself. All right. You hate his men. You hate his law. You, t you tell everybody the law is done away with. Full on just reprobate. So why is the Lord going to, why do you think the Lord is going to save you? He's not. All right, verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Hawashai, Hamashiach. All right, let's get a few more scriptures. All right, if you, so if, if you remain, if you're diligent and make your calling and election sure, all right, you're going to be rewarded. Second, which, with, with, the, with the inheritance of the kingdom, Lord's will. Second Corinthians thirteen and five says, "Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. 
Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. All right, you got to examine yourself. If you're true, if you if you're really for real, like I said, what do you, what do your works say? Because everybody, like I said, everybody say that they believe in the Lord, but when that time comes, all right, everybody's gonna be exposed. It says, "Know ye not your own selves? How that your how is shy is in you, except ye be reprobates." All right, so so how how you gonna know? You gotta prove you gotta prove it through your works. That's how you gonna know. All right, let's see what what's gonna happen to those that. Our, our reprobates, are rejected of the Lord. Let's get this. Second Ezra chapter 8 and verse 1. And he answered me saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, but the world to come for few. All right, so we already know it's going to be very few people that are actually accounted worthy. I will tell thee a, multi, a similitude, all right, which is a, a, mer, a metaphor. Esdras, it says, as when, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made. All right, earthen vessels is talking about people. So there's a whole lot of moldy-ass niggas out here in the, in the world that the Lord is going to destroy. All right? But look what it says. It says, but little dust that gold cometh of. All right? So that's what the, that's what the Lord wants. He, want, he wants that gold dust. All right? He wants, he wants the men, all right, that are, that are gold. All right? He, want, he wants the, the men of value. Because once again, you go back to that definition of a reprobate. All right. A reprobate. Let me see what it, what it, where it said that. Um, yeah. OK. A reprobate. The definition, it says worthless, literally or morally. All right. If you have mold in your house, what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to you're going to cut it out the wall and you're going to toss it in the damn garbage. All right. So that's how the Lord sees. That's how he sees those, those unfaithful servants. He sees you as, as worthless and he's going he gonna to cast you out. All right. Continuing on, it says, I'm going to read that again. Second Ezra 8 and 2. I will tell thee a similar to the Ezra as when thou askest the, askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold whereof earth and vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present world. So most of the, most of the people on the face of the earth are mold. All right. And then you got a very little bit of gold dust. It says there be many created, but few shall be saved. All right. Everybody, it's not for everybody. The true thing for everybody. All right. It's only for the elect. All right. Let's get this right quick. <clears throat> so what is the Lord going to do? All right. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse uh, 17. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, the house of Israel all right, Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, to me, is to me become dross. All right, dross is something, like it says, like mold, you know, something that's unpleasant to look at. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver. All right, so the Lord say, I don't, I don't want, I don't want lead. I don't want brass. I don't want tin. I only want silver. I want gold. He says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh. Because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. All right, a people before it's a place. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Whew, that's fire. Literally. <laughs> Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and you shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And you shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. All right. So that's what he's going to do. He said, I'm going I'm to leave you. I'm going to melt you. All right. And how is he going to melt you? By way of World War III and those nuclear missiles. All right. So with that being said, let's close out with this. All right, Luke 21 and 36 says, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man. All right. To be of the elect, to be the remnant. All right. So you got to you got to examine yourself. All right. Lest you be reprobate. So Lord's will, this was edifying. As always, I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Gwadash. All right, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone teaching who rule well. 
Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear. All right, until next time, Shalom.